And then here, I'm not sure exactly how many there is, but we've got about a dinner table's worth of Wii U pads. Hello, long time no see. So you may be wondering where the hell I've been for, I don't know, like five months. Has been a while, do apologize. The reason I haven't been uploading is because doing eBay reselling and YouTube on top just got a bit much. So as we all know, eBay reselling is a hell of a lot of work. I basically work seven days a week, like 12 hours a day a lot of the time. And then to do YouTube on top of that, it just really takes it out of you. I was doing like two or three hours of editing every night for a whole week. That's how long it takes me to edit a video because I'm a perfectionist. So yeah, I needed a break from that, um, which I've really been enjoying to be honest. But yeah, I thought I'd just come on and give you guys a bit of an update of what I've been doing, how the business is going, anything that's new, which would include, I've done loads of workshop improvements, which I'll show you. Um, I've completely finished my testing station, which I'd like to show you as well. I've joined Whatnot, that's another, Thing I've done that I haven't actually mentioned on YouTube once yet which has been quite a big change to my business actually really really loving whatnot but I'll get into that more a bit later and then also we've got a massive epic car boot pickup which is one of the biggest and most expensive things I've bought from a car boot sale and potentially the most profitable thing as well so we will get into that as well so yeah where do we start? I guess I can show you the workshop improvements. So let's get into it. So since you last saw me, I have actually developed a brand new contact, which has been very, very fruitful. But that has caused me a bit of an issue, which is that I was, or basically still am, running out of space. I'm in no position at all to be moving out or getting a unit or anything like that. I'm nowhere near that yet. So I thought I need to maximize the space that I have in this shed and make do with what I've got, basically. So the first thing I've done is I've done an extension here. So if you remember before, we just had one single shelf there, which you can see here. Um, and basically what I've done I had all this floor space down here and what was happening is I was filling the shelves up and then I was just ending up stacking stuff up on the floor and I was getting a bit sick of that so I thought do you know what I may as well just put another shelf in here which actually fits perfectly in there um, it's another I think it's 450 mil deep and that's just butted up against the one that was already there um, and now I've got twice as much depth in here so on this bottom one here we've got all my or some of my untested consoles, bags and bags of remotes, which I need to send off for consignment. We've got Lego, we've got, those are all my tested consoles in there. And then up here, that's basically all camera stuff. I've got like probably nearly a hundred different cameras in there that I just haven't got around to even touching yet. And then up here, I did have loads of random crap up here that I never even, that wasn't stock, it was just random stuff, which I'll get to. That is now over there. I've put a big shelf up there because this was all wasted space. So all of this has been moved from there and is now there. But yeah, putting this shelf in, it's just given me so much more space. I mean, now look, I can stack stuff right up to the ceiling here and right back there. So yeah, improvement number one. And then the second thing I've done, which is probably my most favorite improvement, is I've put storage in the ceiling. So I don't know if you can remember before, but all up here was just wasted empty space. And now I've got these boxes, which just pull down like that. So let me just grab you there and I'll show you how this works. So what I've done is I've just fixed some timbers on the side of these rafters here and then I've fixed some of these metal brackets on and as you can see the boxes they just sort of slide up there 
And uh, yeah, I've got three of them in at the minute. I've got space for one more to go in. But as you can see, that is the biggest possible size box that I could have possibly fit in there. And they fit really, really well. And I've just been using these for like stuff that's not really like listed stuff. So in this one, I've got all my tested controllers. And then that one, I've got like untested controllers. This one's full of spare cases and manuals. But yeah, having those there has really, really made a massive difference because all of that stuff was on my single shelf over there, just taking up loads of space that I didn't have. So now that's all packed away, easy to access, and it's filling a space that was previously completely useless, basically. So then when I need to put them back, all I have to do, now look at this as well. I don't know how well of an angle you can see this, but since I've put that shelf up, I can just get that box up and down there. I didn't plan that, that was just a fluke. But there you go, well pleased with that. That's one of my favorite things I've done in here. So the next thing I've done is made some improvements to my bubble wrap dispenser. Now I've currently run out of bubble wrap so I can't show you this working but basically beforehand I didn't have it boxed in like this so all this stuff that's here just kept falling in underneath it and stuff and also when I had to change it I'd have to move all this stuff out of the way and feed it in through here. So yeah as I say I've boxed it in now on this side and then I've put this panel on magnets so if I just move this TV out of the way a bit difficult with one hand now that just pulls off like that and I can feed the bubble wrap in and out through here. As I say, I have run out of bubble wrap currently. Imagine that's got bubble wrap on it. I just literally chuck that in there, stick my panel back on. It just clips on like that, move the TV back. And there we go, job done so much better than it was before. Doing my head in that was, trying to move everything out the way to change that. And then, as I mentioned earlier, I've got a shelf in here now. Not much more I can say about that, it's a shelf. Um, one thing I have done though, is I've moved a lot of the stuff that was on here, and I've now moved it up there, like my printer, my speakers, all that. Um, I've got a nice little rack here for my scales. That was actually a first aid kit rack holder that I had in my van. But I noticed that it fits my scales really nicely. So that just keeps them out the way when I'm not using them. And then the last thing I've done, which again, not that exciting. I've just put an Ikea Billy bookcase in here because what was happening here is it was just getting piles of crap just building up. So I thought I may as well, I measured one of these and I thought actually that fits in there perfectly. So what I do now is all my gaming stuff now goes on here because this was another thing I wanted to get into. Most of my gaming stuff now goes on whatnot. So what I do is I build it all up here, stack it on the shelves. Um, so up here, these are where I put anything I wanna keep, I put on the top shelf. And then once that gets full, I take it inside, put it in my collection. Got some nice bits up here. Got a sealed Xbox remote there. We've got Master System games, NES games, a few bits. But yeah, the rest of it all just goes there now and it's really making more use of that space. Um, currently, these are all my consoles. Well, some of them, honestly, I've got probably about 50 consoles at the minute and I'm really trying to make a push to actually sort them out because they just sit on my shelf and <laughs> there's some good money sitting there, but it is quite a lot of work testing them, cleaning them, all that. But yeah, these are the ones that I've tested, I've factory reset, all that. These now just need cleaning. It's in my to-do list. I've got this, which I'm very pleased with. That is a brand new, never used, never opened, boxed Wii U, limited edition, and it's minty. Literally, that is brand new. So I, there's no way I can let go of that. That's also going in my collection. Well pleased with that. We've also got a, a new chair in here. So another problem I've been having in here is because of this hard concrete floor that I have to stand up on all day, it makes my feet hurt. So I've been desperately needing a seat in here. So I thought I may as well make this into a nice little desk, seeing as that's where my computer is. Now, I didn't want to have a chair in there and the chair take up all that space. Again, I'm tight for 
for space in here, so I need to make the most of what I've got. So, I bought this chair, which believe it or not, used to be a toilet chair, <laughs> which I found on Amazon. But this was ideal for what I needed because it had adjustable legs on it, because this is very, very high up and being tall as well, I needed it to be way up here. But yeah, the fact that the legs are that on the side, that allows me to not waste this space in here. So at the minute, what I've been using it for is I've got these black crates. When I'm sorting through stock, you always come across random bits that aren't really good enough to put on eBay because of the condition or, you know, maybe not worth too much, but it's perfectly good car boot stuff. So I'll now just stick it all in here. And then once that's full up, I'll store that in the van until I'm ready to do a car boot. So it's in the van out the way and then I'll replace it with an empty crate. And then last but not least, I've finally finished my testing station. So the last time you saw this, I was missing quite a few consoles, but now I've pretty much got everyone that I need really. NES, SNES, N64, GameCube, PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4, got Wii U there, Mega Drive, Xbox, uh, Master System, 360, Dreamcast, Xbox One, a few random bits in there as well. And then in these drawers, I've got all my controllers that go with the consoles. I've also got like handhelds in here, DS, Game Boy, PSP, um, spare, DS chargers and stuff, and like power bricks, all that sort of stuff. Oh, and I've actually wired them in. If you can see in there, I've actually drilled the backs out and wired them all in. So for ages, they weren't actually wired in. And when I needed one, I had to pull it out and put it up here and use it, which completely defeats the point of building this in the first place. I've also labeled them all up on here. So because there's more plugs than there is sockets, the way I designed this with all these little grommets here is when they're not being used, they just sort of sit there. So for instance, if I need to use the PS2, I can pull one of them out, plug the PS2 in, turn it on, and then turn it on, grab my controller, plug it in, and that's all ready to go. So if I need to test a game or a controller or an accessory for basically any console, all there, all ready to go. And what I've done is all these ones are wired into that TV and all of these ones are wired into this TV. Now, there's only so many sockets in the back of these TVs. I chose these TVs because they have lots of sockets, but you still can't plug them all in. So what I've done is I've labeled these all up. So that one's Wii U. And I've plugged in as many as I can. But yeah, when I'm not using them, they unplug. So if I need to use the Wii, I'll unplug that, plug that one in. And to make it so it wasn't really messy with all this coming out, I've used this stuff. It's called, I think it's called Tessa Tape. And I've wrapped that around all of those. So it's like one cable. And that all just goes into that same hole there. And that just makes it so much neater. And yeah, when I'm not using it, push that back. And if you was wondering why there's two monitors here, basically that's so you can test two consoles at the same time. Um, because especially things like Xbox Ones, they can take like over an hour to do an update or re uh, format the hard drive or whatever. So I can be updating one on there. I can be formatting one on there or testing another one on there. Again, it's just another time saving thing really. If you're doing a lot of consoles, definitely need more than one. And then the good thing about these as well, is look how many USB sockets I've got. So I can be plugging in DS's and cameras and all sorts of stuff, all charging all at once. Highly recommend them. I've got that on Amazon. If you need a link, I'll put it in the description. But yeah, I am well pleased with this. This is by far the favorite part of the shed for me. And then we've got the trusty old disc cleaner. Nothing's really changed here, but this thing's still going strong. This is one of the best things I've bought for my business. I honestly don't know how I'd actually manage without this now. If I ever get scratch discs, I don't even have to care about it or worry about it. I just stick it in here, then they come out like brand new. If you do have discs of your own that you want repairing, just send me a message on Instagram 
and I can sort that out for you, no problem. And then I guess I'll just show you these. These are a few bits I got from the last car boot. So I've picked up a couple of Mega Drives. We've got a blue DSi there, a couple of Wii's and a bunch of games. These ones are all the ones I'm gonna keep because they're all in mint condition and complete. I always keep stuff like that. I'd make a lot more money if I didn't. But these ones will all be going on Whatnot. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I've now joined Whatnot. This is one of the things that I've been up to since you last saw me. All of my gaming stuff now goes on Whatnot. So if you're not familiar with Whatnot, it is a live selling app where basically you... I'll just give you a demonstration. So I'll pull down my nice little phone holder there, which I've attached to the ceiling. You stick your phone on it. You go live on whatnot and then you just hold stuff up to the camera you'll be like right guitar hero 2 legends of rock here we go there's the condition run the auction two pounds start i start everything at two pounds you can do one pound starts and you literally say if i did a show tonight all i've got to do phone on tripod pick stuff out hold it there you can do 30 second auctions and everything you see here i could do a two hour stream and that would all be gone every single item even all the fodder even stuff if it's faulty or broken as long as you mention that it'll all go and that is the beauty of whatnot if you've got a lot of stock coming in and not a lot of space and you just need to clear clear stuff you will sell it for less money than you get on ebay but what i've been finding with gaming stuff is it still sells for decent money you might get like a bit less than you get on ebay sometimes you might get half what you get on ebay but if you can pick it up real cheap like i can and i'm sure a lot of you guys can as well sometimes it's worth just doing a whatnot show because you think of the work involved going through all of this cleaning everything testing everything photographing it listing it then you've got to wait for it to sell could take six months or you could set a phone up do a whatnot show for a couple of hours and then all of that will be gone and the payout for example if i was to do all this you'd be so surprised what the payout would be you'd be very happy with what that payout would be if this was your stuff i'll put it that way and then i've got all this space back where i can just bring a load more stock in do it again and i've been doing it on top of ebay so i'm earning my ebay money and my whatnot money. And I can honestly say I've got more money in my account now than I've had ever since I started reselling, which is why I love whatnot so much. If you are interested in signing up to whatnot, you may as well use the referral link in the description and you'll get a free 10 pound to spend anywhere you like on whatnot. So you may as well give it a go. If you wanna become a seller on whatnot, use my seller referral link you won't get anything out of that but i will get a paid bonus for that so it's entirely up to you if you're going to sign up to sell anyway you may as well if you want to help support me i'd really appreciate that now let's move on to the grand finale i guess of this video which is the biggest car boot sale pickup that i've ever purchased for the most amount of money i've ever spent on one item i think and i can't even fit it in here so let's go and have a look and here we go look at all this so we've got i think about 75 mostly official PlayStation 3 controllers, tons in there, a few limit, limited edition ones. Then we've also got, I think again, about 75 Xbox One and 360 controllers. Again, limited edition ones. Absolutely tons and tons in there. And then here, I'm not sure exactly how many there is, but we've got about a dinner table's worth <laughs> of Wii U pads. Now these look pretty damn nice to me. The guy that was selling them said it's all untested. Now he often has stuff like this. He just comes with like ridiculous amounts of stuff like this. And I've never really bothered with them because when you look at the controllers he normally brings, they do look a bit sort of dirty and battered. And I thought, yeah, they're probably all broken. Now these probably all are spares repairs or most of them at least i've spoken to someone that's bought from him before and he said you do get quite a few of them that do work but i paid a not even a pound each actually i think it was about 70p it worked out for all the controllers as i say there's 
about 150 controllers. I gave him 100 quid. So I think that's about 75p. Not very good at maths. And then these were five pounds each. This is what sold it for me. He's never brought anything like this. Um, sadly, it is just the pads and not the console as well. But I haven't tested anything yet. But I did pull one of these out. I charged it up and it works perfectly. So that is giving me real high hopes for these because at a fiver each, I know that I can sell these for 20 pounds each as spares repairs. But if these work, these are 40 to 50 pounds each. And as I say, I've tested the first one I tested, works perfectly. I need to go through them. I'll have to update you on these in a future video, but that there looks to me like a perfect multi-quantity listing. Um, I've actually gone ahead and bought about 10 USB chargers so I can charge 10 of these at a time because obviously to test them I need them charged. So yeah, to charge all them would take a long time. But yeah, so it was about 600 pounds in total. Never spent that much before at a car boot sale. But I mean, look, these are, mostly DualShock 3 ones. And I think a lot of them just need a good clean. But yeah, my plan is I'm gonna try and job lot these controllers off, sell them to someone that will fix them and go through them and spend time on them. I'll sell them at a, probably looking at like three, four pounds each, hopefully. And then, yeah, hopefully I can make back most of my money just job lotting them off. And then I'm gonna go through these, test them, and I'll probably have two quantity listings. One will be fully working ones, and then the other will be faulty. So at a minimum, I'm getting 20 pound each, and at a maximum, I'll probably list them around 40. I could probably get 50, but I'd like to sell these really as quickly as I can. I did do some maths and work out what I could potentially make off of all this. I can't remember what it was. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, and there's a few bits here that were in there that I'm gonna keep. I've got loads of white Xbox consoles and no white controllers, so I've kept them. I've got a Forza Xbox in there, you saw a bit earlier. It's a bit broken, but I'll reshell that onto a working one. So I could put that with that. And then I've robbed a load of these backs because you know those are always handy but yeah i hope you enjoyed the video please subscribe if you haven't already and i shall see you in the next one